Welcome back to the University of Life Writing Center. We're now covering chapter nine, style, and this happens to be the last of the foundational concepts that you need to understand to make the most of your writing and to make it easiest and everything. So style is, a, remember in chapter two, audience, I talked about how there are two primary components of your actual paper. There's the content, what you say, and there's the style, how you say it. Right? And that's what this chapter addresses. And there are lots of different choices. It can be more formal, or it can be more casual. You can uh, choose different words to create different tones, right? Here's some tone examples. It can be happy, sad, funny, serious, quick, slow, haunting, mysterious, adventurous, melodramatic, wistful, exotic, incendiary, captivating, obnoxious, passive, or all of the above. By the way, if you pull off all of the above, send it my way, please. I'd love to see that. Um, anyway, choosing a tone can help your paper succeed better, you know, with different audiences. Even when it's formal and kind of dry with facts, there's still things you can do, like background music and create rhythm, which is chapter 31 in there, to still evoke some good pathos and make it more interesting more pleasant to read. But the way you decide which style you should use, formal, funny, serious, whatever, is by using this little tool that I came up with, the writing spectrum. All right? At one end, you have closed form writing. And this is where you're writing and people expect you to follow specific conventions. And it's usually more formal, right? Like. Uh, one inch margins, don't tell jokes, and don't say the word I. Have you had a teacher before? I assume you have that it told you you should never say I in a paper. Well, why is that? Because obviously sometimes you should, right? Well, it's because they're talking about the very extreme closed form formal writing. And that one, it expects you not to say I because that, that makes it subjective, that makes it about you instead of being more objective just about the facts. It's impossible, of course, to be completely, truly objective because just the fact you're talking about it shows some, you know, shows your opinions and your interest and some subjectivity. But nevertheless, um, and oftentimes when you do say I, like if you express an opinion, I'll do another video about this later, critical thinking, if you say I think it stinks, well, that's just an opinion and that's worthless to someone else who wants to make up their own mind about it. They need the facts. Now, if you're a little more casual, you can say, I think it stinks and here's why. Now, if you back up, you support your claim, fine. Right? If it's more casual, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, over on the other side, you have open form. And at the extreme end, anything goes. You don't even have to use punctuation, right? You can uh, tell all the jokes you want. Maybe you can even be have crappy block critical thinking and terrible claims, right? Now, obviously don't turn that in for a paper where you're expected to make some good points because you'll fail it. And the, the way you choose where you fall, of course, on on the writing spectrum depends on your purpose and audience, right? Who you're writing for, where are they okay with it? What are they gonna enjoy most? What's gonna, what's gonna get your, your, your best grade? Because maybe that's your real purpose, get a good grade. But if you wanna get a good grade, pretend you have another purpose to inform or to persuade or whatever your assignment may be. Oh, last thing I'll say, style can go beyond word choice, beyond structure and organization and, and pace, you know, how long you dwell on each point. It can also go to the, can be applied to the physical presentation. 